Hello, and welcome to English Fluency Now podcast, episode number 50. My name is Lisa, and this is the English Fluency Now podcast, a podcast which will help you improve your English by listening to authentic English spoken by American English speakers. The podcast covers topics related to everyday life, business, education, travel, and a variety of other interesting topics. To get the lesson guide for this episode, go to my website, www.englishfluencynow.com, and click on the products page. The lesson guide has the complete transcript so you can read along while you listen. It also has other helpful learning materials such as comprehension questions, definitions for more than 25 vocabulary words used in the podcast, and sample sentences, and links to more videos and articles related to today's topic. Also, on the website, you can sign up for my free email course, 7 Strategies for English Fluency. The course gives you 7 lessons about things you need to do to become fluent in English. Okay! Let's begin. In today's episode, I want to talk about the idea of setting goals and whether or not it is a good thing to do. New Year's Eve is right around the corner. In fact, it's tonight. And this is a traditional time to take stock of what you have done in the past year and make plans for the next year. Usually, people speak in terms of making New Year's resolutions and more recently, success-oriented folks Talk about setting and tracking goals. As you probably know, people are notorious for not being able to stick with their New Year's resolutions. Have you ever made a New Year's resolution to, say, lose some weight, only to find that by Valentine's Day you have actually gained a couple of pounds? What happened? On January 1st, you resolved to lose 10 pounds and you started off all gung-ho, going to the gym, eating salads for dinner, skipping dessert. Then, about three weeks or even a month into it, if you were lucky, you started to go back to your old tricks, finally giving up altogether. Okay, no big deal. New Year's resolutions are sort of for fun anyway. It's like it's a nice idea and if you can do it, great. But if you can't, there's always next year. So for many... Making a New Year's resolution is sort of a fun tradition and a nice idea, but not necessarily something you stick with for very long. And that's usually okay for most people. It has become sort of a joke, really. As you may recognize from these examples, New Year's resolutions are generally vague. They sound something like this. I want to lose weight. I want to be fluent in Spanish. I want to learn how to knit. I want to travel more. I want to get outside in nature more often. I want to get regular exercise. Some people argue that the vagueness is what leads to the failure to maintain your momentum and stick with your plans because you basically don't have a plan. How are you going to lose some weight or exercise more? What does that even mean specifically? Modern-day success-oriented people, on the other hand, believe they have found the secret to success, and that is to set specific, realistic goals and track them. But before we go into that, just what is a goal anyway? Well, basically, a goal is a desired result. It is something that you plan for and commit to achieving at some future date. Many people endeavor to reach goals within a finite time by giving themselves a deadline. In my experience, setting a goal and creating a plan for how you are going to achieve that goal can help you reach it. People do this all the time, and it can work. You say to yourself, this week I am going to finish this project by Thursday morning. Well, you either do or you don't. But if you made a realistic and specific goal and gave yourself a deadline and maybe even a consequence for not reaching your goal, then you were likely able to meet it. Setting and tracking specific goals is a common personal growth practice these days. And in terms of setting goals for an entire year, 
it could look something like this. Instead of saying, I want to improve my English this year, you could say, I want to read five books in English by June. Or, I want to take the TOEFL exam and get a 26 on the speaking section. Or, I want to speak to someone in English for at least one hour per week about politics and the economy. You have the desired result, the time period for achieving it, and now you can make a plan of action. But what I've noticed is that even when people make realistic and specific goals, they don't always achieve them. And a lot of times they end up feeling frustrated and depressed and they tend to beat themselves up for not following through with their plans and not achieving their goals. Sometimes they go to the extreme and give up altogether and feel really disappointed with themselves, berating themselves for being lazy, not smart enough, etc. Another perspective in terms of personal growth and achievement in your life is to not make goals and to not make any plans, but rather to let inspiration drive you. This is a controversial issue, so I provide links to articles and videos that talk about each side of this debate in the lesson guide. But the idea of not setting any goals is certainly worthy of consideration. That is, what if instead of saying that in the next year you are going to 1. Lose 15 pounds by June, 2. Run a half marathon by October, 3. Read 100 books in the new year, and 4. Paint your bedroom and kitchen by May, you just did what inspires you the most in the moment. What would that look like for you? The idea is that goals are for people who are not truly motivated to do the things they say they want to do. They have an idea in their mind of the person they want to be, and they decide what types of things they want to achieve to be that person, and then they try to motivate themselves to do a variety of things. When a person is truly inspired, they don't need motivational techniques such as goal setting. In his book, Goals Suck, Why the Obsession with Goal Setting is a Flawed Approach to Productivity and Life in General, author Matt Stone argues that in order to be super productive in both your personal and professional life, you must do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's a direct quote. In the book, he tells us of his own history as a former goal-oriented person which started when he was a young adolescent boy wanting to be super fit and muscular. To do this, he set goals for how many push-ups to do and how many miles to run. But then, when he was unable to stick to his plan and reach his goals, he began to hate himself and even the idea of working out. Throughout his 20s and 30s, he had the same experiences over and over again, setting goals, working hard to achieve them, meeting some of them, and falling off the wagon with others, but ultimately losing interest in the things he had previously loved so much, such as skiing, hiking, and cooking. Rather than doing things just for pleasure, he always tried to improve his skills and achieve more, sometimes pushing himself to the extreme. In the book, he walks the reader through the personal philosophical evolution that has led him to his current conclusion that, quote, goals are not only a suboptimal solution to a productivity and focus problem, but in fact suck, end quote. Stone claims that not having any goals has allowed him to be freakishly productive and able to maintain a higher level of life satisfaction, and well-being. In his book, he lists all the things he did in one year without setting any goals. He was extremely productive. He started three new businesses while running another, wrote and published eight books, narrated 53 books for Audible.com, created seven websites, recorded and published 25 podcasts, hired and helped train 20 people, and much more. He even squeezed in a two-month vacation. 
His main argument is that if you are setting goals for yourself, you are probably not doing what you really enjoy doing. And if you find the thing in your life that you are passionate about, you will naturally want to do more of it and you will thus become quite productive and happy. How do you know what you are passionate about? Pay attention to the things that you are drawn to naturally without anybody making you be interested in them or telling you that you have to do this or that. What are the books that you find yourself reading all the time, finishing them without any effort and in a short period of time? What do you like to talk about with your family and friends? What do you do when you are completely free to do whatever you want? These are the things you are passionate about, and if you focus on doing these things, you will be productive and happy without setting goals. The problem is that we are often doing things that we don't enjoy very much or even value. This happens with learning English as well. The best English students are always the ones who love English. They don't need to set goals for themselves because they actually want to listen to podcasts, watch movies, read books, talk to people, and immerse themselves in the English language as much as possible. They do it naturally and don't necessarily need to track their time and their accomplishments, like how many sentences they read each day or how many minutes they speak each week. I once had a student who was asked how he had learned English so well without leaving his country. The other students were so impressed and they wanted to know his secrets. He told them that he spent up to 10 hours or more per day watching CNN, TV series, and movies, and that he read anything he could find in English. He was doing this while living through a war in Iraq and working. English had obviously been a passion for him, not a chore or a requirement for school or work. His English was quite excellent, despite the fact that he had never spent time in an English-speaking country. He didn't need to set goals, he just did what he enjoyed, and he had great success in that area. So, should you set goals or not? I guess you basically have to figure out what really works for you. If you are a naturally inspired person and find it easy to focus on the things you love, especially in your personal life, but hopefully also in your work life, then you probably don't have to set goals because you will already be doing so many interesting and exciting things that you will be productive and enjoy yourself in the process of living and pursuing your interests. But if, on the other hand, you find that you aren't really that inspired to do certain things in life, like getting exercise, improving your English, or losing weight, but you think you want or should do these things and that your life would be better if you could do these things, then you might try setting some goals and give yourself a deadline, a time period in which to complete the goal, and perhaps even a consequence for not achieving your goal. In the end, it is something that we all must figure out for ourselves. What things are important in life and how do we want to make sure we achieve them? Do we just follow our interests or do we need to set goals, make plans, and track our progress? What do you think? Will you be making some New Year's resolutions, setting some goals, or will you just focus on doing whatever you want, whatever you feel inspired to do? Please share your thoughts in the comments section of the blog post for this episode. Whatever you decide to do, I wish you all a very happy new year with lots of success, health, and happiness in the new year and always. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for listening to the English Fluency Now podcast. I hope you have enjoyed it. Remember, repetition is key, so I recommend that you listen to the podcast several times over the next few days. Get the lesson guide if you want to read along with the transcript and use this podcast to study this topic more in depth. If you want to improve your speaking skills, pick up a copy of my course, Success with Stories. It trains you to speak English automatically, without thinking and without translating in your head. You can find out more about the Success with Stories course and listen to some sample lessons at www.englishfluencynow.com. 
Thank you. And until next time, be well.